Niels Bohr proposed out uh, or say suggested some doubts in Rutherford's model and later on he considered Rutherford's model as standard model only with certain changes. Say for example, uh, this is a nucleus. Rutherford is saying electrons are revolving around that uh, nucleus in circular orbit. Uh, instead of that, now correction is that it is revolving in spherical way. So three dimensional view is there. Niels Bohr put forward a derivation. By that derivation, he was able to prove that when electrons, when they are revolving in particular prescribed path, that is called as, uh, according to him, he called that as orbital or orbit. So if that electron is following that prescribed path, then it will not fall in the nucleus. It will remain unchanged. So it will follow either spherical path, but not change out to the spiral path and fall in the nucleus. Step by step, electron can be promoted to upper orbital by absorbing energy and lower orbital by releasing energy. Like that concepts were introduced by Niels Bohr, but right now what I am speaking, I must explain it in detail. So uh, let us start now instead of that Bohr's derivation, uh, because I am going to take that derivation, but not in this part. So in some other lecture, I will give that uh, entire derivation, because right now we are interested in electronic configuration and atomic structure. So uh, just consider that outcome of that derivation we are discussing now. So first part, that is uh, how electrons are arranged in the atom. See, initially we were having doubt whether atom is there or not. Then subatomic particles were produced. Now what is atomic structure? After that, we say that where and how electrons are arranged. So for that purpose, Niels Bohr put forward certain laws. No doubt, it is not that Niels Bohr thought therefore he placed. No, with mathematical expressions, he said these are, these are the things they are going to happen. So out of that first important thing that what is the capacity of elect, uh, atom, uh, orbital. So we have to discuss now capacity of orbital. This is nucleus. This is first orbit, second orbit, third orbit and so on. Niels Bohr says that capacity of orbit is equal to 2n square provided n is orbit number. So suppose I am talking about this is the nucleus, this is first orbit, this is second, third, like that orbits are there. Then uh, first orbit, second orbit, third orbit. How many electrons can be there in orbit? For that purpose he says, that number of electron, the maximum number of electron, they can be there, that is equal to 2 into n square. So n stands for number of orbit. So in first orbit, 2 into 1 square. So you are aware that 2 into 1 square is 1. So answer is 2. Second orbit means n equal to 2. Then 2 into 2 square. That will be equal to 2 into 4, that is 8. Now this way you can calculate n equal to 3. Then 2 into 3 square, that will be 2 into 9, so 18. And so on. So this is the condition. But how many electrons are there in atom? That topic now we have to discuss. So here we are now discussing how uh, how many electrons, protons, neutrons they are there in atom any element uh, we can give some symbol say for example X now you are aware that these symbols they are given in Latin language therefore uh, name of element should be there in Latin whatever the Latin name is there accordingly symbols are given but I am just describing here how element uh, is written. So this is some symbol X of that element. Here we are writing A and here Z. 
A stands for mass number. Z stands for atomic number. Now, what is A? A stands for mass number. So, A that is equal to number of protons plus number of neutrons. Why? Because properties of an uh, that uh, subatomic particles. You are aware that proton is having charge plus one. Keep in mind, actual charge is different. But for general consideration, we are taking this charge as plus one. Who discovered proton? Try to recollect in wrong experiment by Goldstein. So charge is plus one. Then mass for general purpose, we are considering one a m u. That is one atomic mass unit. For detail, it is considered as one point zero zero seven eight a m u. So these are the uh, important thing. Location in the nucleus. Who discovered a gold star? Second particle, neutron. Neutron was proposed by Rutherford only. But uh, because we are aware that in the tiny nucleus, all protons are staying together, which is just impossible. To answer that, Rutherford says that there must be some neutral particle that is coming in between. That's why he suggested neutron. But it was proved in much later date. In 1932, neutron was proved by Chadwick. So here, neutron charge is zero. It is not having any charge. Mass for general purpose, 1 AMU. But for detail purpose, it is 1.0086 AMU. Whereas location in the nucleus. The last particle here, that is electron, we are aware this is actually first subatomic particle discovered by Sir J. J. Thomson. It is having charge exactly equal to proton but opposite. So proton is having plus one charge, electron is having minus one charge. Mass, mass of electron is not constant. According to speed, mass of electron changes. But for general practice, we are considering it is 0.000555. AMU or rather I should say that is equal to 1 by 1850 AMU that means 1850 electron will come together then mass will be equal to 1 so electrons are uh, as compared to proton and neutron electrons are having negligible mass and therefore mass number is denoted by only number of protons plus number of neutrons. Whereas atomic number Z is only number of protons. But you are aware that total number of proton equal to total number of electron in any atom. And therefore we can consider whatever number of protons that is number of electrons. And this way, Z, that will give you number of proton plus number of electron. Are you able to follow? Or let us go by some example. So, let us check out example, sodium. No doubt, I am talking sodium and writing Na. Because Latin name of this element is natrium. And therefore, symbol is Na. Its atomic number is 11 and mass number is 23. Now, mass number is 23, atomic number is 11, we have to find out A. Uh, A is there, sorry. A is number of protons plus number of neutrons. Z, Z is what? Number of proton. So, the, the Z is 11. That is equal to number of proton and that is also equal to number of electron. So in atom, number of electron is same as number of proton. Therefore, in case of sodium, 11 protons are there and 11 electrons are there. Now, A is 23. Number of proton we got 11. 
plus number of neutron. So number of neutron that is equal to 23 minus 11 that is equal to 12. So simply we can say that A minus Z will give me number of neutron. So 23 minus 11 I am getting number of neutron. So this way we can calculate number of protons, neutrons and electrons in any atom. So now you are aware of these all atoms. They are having characteristic that is atomic number. And accordingly atoms are now arranged. Now you are aware about the fundamental particles property. Some of the particles we discuss. Why I am saying some of the particles? Because we are at beginning right now. There are so many subatomic particles. They are not always present. At certain part only they can show their presence. Say for example you are aware of electron. Now like that similar particle but opposite in charge is present that is called as positron. Then there are mesons and so many. So we are discussing right now only fewer particles in the atom. So we discuss proton, neutron, electron basic part. So this is the way now we are switching over to electronic configuration. Now we are going to discuss how electrons are arranged in the shell. This is some primitive level electronic configuration we are going to discuss. Uh, why I am saying primitive level? Because after getting concepts clear, we are going to discuss some higher level electronic configuration also. So now you are aware how many electrons are there in atom. That is, uh, you are aware that is equal to their atomic number. Now you are aware that there are orbits. Different shells are there. Electrons are assigned in their shells. You are also aware that capacity of shell is 2n square. Now, uh, I am trying to prepare a table over here. So here I write name of electron, uh, name of atom. So suppose I am writing here sodium. Atomic number 11, mass number 23. Now here uh, number of electrons in atom. So you are aware that atomic number that is equal to number of electrons in any atom. Actually it is number of protons but in any neutral atom number of proton is equal to number of electrons. Therefore, I am writing here number of electrons as 11. But this is not only sufficient capacity. So here I am writing n equal to 1. That is the first chain. Capacity of capacity or number of electrons that is equal to 2n square. So 2n square will be equal to 2. This chain is also denoted as letter k. Now n equal to 2. So 2n square will be equal to 2 into 2 square. So 2 4 is 8. So here capacity is 8. This chain is denoted by letter L. n equal to 3. So 2n square that will be 3 3 is a, uh, 3, 3 is a 9. 9 2 is a 18. So 18. This is denoted by letter M. Next shell n equal to 4, 2 n square will be 4 for the 16 into 2, 32. Shell is denoted by letter n. n equal to 5, obviously 5, 5 is a 25 to the 50, capacity is 50. This is denoted by letter O. So, <coughs> in table, we are writing out number of electrons here. Every time you have to keep in mind here 2 electrons, 8 electrons, 18 electrons, 32 and 50. Now let us first go for sodium, atomic number 11. So as atomic number 11, number of electrons we have to assign there also 11. Now first chain, now uh, what Bohr says, the first rule, the first rule is that we have to feel lower shells first and then upper shell. 
So here I will go for n equal to 1. First shell, I will fill 2 electrons here. Whereas total available electrons are 11. Out of that 2 are accommodated here. Now reminder 9. So here I have to keep 8 electrons because capacity of this shell is 8. So I have placed 8. 8 plus 2, 10. Here 11 electrons are there, therefore reminder is 1. And then last electron I can keep here. No doubt capacity is of 18. But less than 18 are allowed. More than 18 not allowed. So I have placed 1 electron. So this way we can write electronic configuration of sodium. In this way that is 2, 8, 1. 2, 8, 1. So this way we are writing out electronic configuration of sodium. I will write here also 2, 8, 1. This way we can write configuration of sodium. Now next element. Uh, okay. Let me check whether you are able to follow or not. So next element I will give here that is phosphorus atomic number 15. Mass number 31. So atomic number is 15 over here. So you have to go back phosphorus now. So number of uh, okay. Uh, pause this video and try to carry out electronic configuration yourself first and then start this video and check out so number of electron 15 first shell 2 as it is maximum 8 second shell 8 plus 2 10 reminder 5 whereas last shell is having capacity 18 so I can keep 5 electrons as it is so this way Electronic configuration of phosphorus, I can write 2, 8, 5, this way. So, this is the case. We can check out electronic configuration with this one. This is given by Niels Bohr and we are making table, tr uh, trying to make table more advanced possible. Let us check now electronic configuration of calcium. But for that purpose, we have to check another rule also. Hmm? Let me clarify that another rule. So first I will write here electronic configuration of calcium uh, 20 mass number 40. So as this number is 20, number of electrons available is 20. I have to accommodate now 20 electrons in all this shell. Now uh, as earlier this is 2, 8, so 2 plus 8, 10, reminder 10, here capacity is 18. So I should write 10 here. But here Bohr place another rule that if last shell is having more than 8 electrons not permitted, we can keep at the most 8 electrons in this last shell. And therefore I have to remove this 10 and I have to place here 8 only. So irrespective of capacity, I have to give only 8 electrons in last shell. So I have placed here 8. Reminder is now 2 and that is placed in next shell. So that's why configuration of calcium I am writing 2, 8, 8, 2 and not 2, 8 and 10. Because if I am considering 2, 8 and 10 then last shell is having more than 8 electrons. Not permitted. Getting idea? Now you try yourself one more element here. That is potassium, atomic number 19, mass number 39. You try. Pause this video and then observe this video. Now uh, it is same to same like calcium only. Uh, number of electrons 19, first shell 2 electron, second shell 8, 2 plus 8 10, reminder 9. So supposed to be, I have to write here 9, but we are aware of this rule. Last shell should not have more than 8 electrons. And therefore I am removing this. Here I am writing 8. And last shell is having 1 electron. So configuration is 2, 8, 8, 1. Getting idea? So this is something. The expected electronic configuration. According to this table. Now condition is that. Uh, here some questions are always there in my mind. That why 8 electrons I have to place here? Because ultimately it is not last shell now. Initially when 10 electrons are there it is last shell. 
but now two electrons are here. So can I shift seven electron and three electron, six electron and four electron, five electrons and five electrons like that also, and therefore we have problem. To solve this type of thing, these electronic configurations are used till only here. Suppose scandium is next element, atomic number 21, how we are going to assign and like that various questions are there and this can be solved by next configuration given by Niels Bohr that is called as Aufbau principle. With help of Aufbau principle we can give certainly answers of these all questions. So let us check now Aufbau principle. Now we are discussing a concept of electronic configuration suggested by Niels Bohr that is called as Aufbau principle. This is something German word Aufbau. The meaning is that to fill up. So how electrons are filled up in the uh, atom. Now in previous part we discussed that there are shells n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3 even that uh, shells are having name n equal to 1 that means k n equal to 2 that is l like that but that configuration is not that much sufficient because uh, that is applicable approximately till atomic number 20 that is applicable but further to that we require some different chart so i am showing you here right now the chart try to understand first because at the end we are going to discuss in detail once again with other data. So right now we are uh, making a chart that is called as Aufbau principle. Now here how electrons are arranged in the shells. For that purpose this chart is there. But uh, how that is shell then there are subshells and capacities of that. So that we are going to discuss right now. You are aware that uh, people in different part of world they discover different styles of writing. Say for example in India we are writing this way from left to right. In Europe also people are writing this way only that left to right. But in Arabian subcontinent Persia they are writing from right to left like Urdu or ancient Indian script that is called as Kharosh tree but that was not Indian script that was you know, introduced by Persian people particularly in the valley of Indus this script was introduced that is called as Kharosh tree script during Hakamani Empire Japanese people you are aware they are writing actually if I am writing this way then I should call this right but if I am writing this way then what I should call but Japanese people are writing in this way, top to bottom. Whereas chemist now writing from bottom to top. Now what Aufbau principle is there? For that purpose various charts and various methods are available. I am teaching you only one method because my suggestion is that follow only that one method. Otherwise lots of confusion people are doing. And ultimately they are making atomic catastrophe. So forget of that. Try to follow only one method. Now I will show here that method. So first the orbits irrespective of uh, their n equal to 1 and n equal to 2, 3 like that. They are uh, given, distributed in the format S, P, D, F. They are subshells of every atom, uh, every orbit. S is having capacity 2. It is written on superscript. Superscript means above this. 
and that is in also form of small point. But don't read this as S square. While reading, we have to read as S2. The method is this P6, D10, and F14. Again, telling these are the maximum capacities of electrons in the suborbit or subshell. So, these are the capacities I have mentioned over here. Now, how to write? It is 1s. I will start from this way. 1s. 1 indicate first orbit. S indicate subshell. Then 2s. After 2s, I will write here 2p. Say for s, pdf. Sorry, for first 1, pdf is not there. For 2, it is only P. So S as well as P. 3S 3P 3D 4S 4P 4D 4F See, every time I am increasing 1 1 orbital. So here S, then P, then D and then F is last. Then 5S 5p, 5d, 5f. May be possible, they are there. But whatever total atoms available today, they are having only this much. 6 is 6p, 6d, 6f. 7 is 7p, 7d, 7f. That's all. This is first. We are writing out all these orbitals clearly. So when I am saying 5D, it indicates main shell number 5, subshell D. Capacity of D is 10. It is written. Now we have to join this. So we have to put a track. And like that we are arranging them in the track. So first track, second track. Only one station here, only one station here. Now third track having two stations. While you are going to writing out, at that time you should not write one, two, three. Only draw lines. In some book they are showing lines this way, but over after that coming this way. And like that. But it is making diagram more complicated. Instead of that, keep in mind, travel from here to here, and then go to next track. Go to next track, fourth, fifth, sixth, don't miss out anything, uh, seventh, otherwise what happens that sometimes some letters are missing out, eight, Nine and lastly only one ten. Now how to carry out electronic configuration? Let us perform it for sodium. So I am writing here sodium atomic number eleven mass number twenty three. Uh, we discuss this. How many electrons are there in sodium? Answer is 11. Why? Because this is atomic number. Now I have to arrange 11 electrons here. In previous part, we discussed how electrons are arranged according to KLM. But now we are going to discuss in detail. So uh, I have to assign 11 electrons. So I will follow this track, track number 1. It is 1s. So I will write 1s. How many electrons can be accommodated in S orbit? Answer is maximum 2. So I will write here 2. Because I have 11 electrons to fill. Out of that 2, we have filled out. Next track, 2S. See, we are following this track, ended. Now start next track, 
only one station is there, write down 2S. What is the capacity of S? Again 2. So write down 2. Don't read 1S square. Read 1S 2. 2S 2. Then go to third track. You will find 2P. So in 2P we can fill 6 electrons. Capacity is 6. Reminder 1. So check out. It's 2 plus 2, 4 plus 6, 10. So after 2P there is 3S. So write down 3S and no doubt capacity is of 2 but available electron is only 1. Therefore write down it as 1. So this way we have mentioned that electrons in sodium they are like this. Now the previous questions. In previous session only we have doubt that why electronic configuration of calcium is 2882. Why not 28? 5 and 5. Okay. That answer we are going to find out here. Calcium atomic number 20, mass number 40. That means how many electrons are there? 20. Now we have to fill 20 electrons here. So I have to follow this chart 1s2. Then go to second track 2s2. Then third track 2p6. After that 3s2. Keep eye on the number of electrons, so it is 10 plus 2, 12. I have to accommodate 20 electrons. So 12 electrons already accommodated till 3s. Then go to next track, 4 track, we will get 3p. So 3p, 6. Now number of electrons, 10 plus 6, uh, 16 plus 2, 18. So 18 electrons are filled here till 3p. Many students are committing mistake in general. They after 3P they write 3D. So this is not this way we have to go. That's why I have produced track here. So after 3P go to this line you will get there 4S. And therefore it is 4S. And we have two electrons so I am filling out. Now is it according to previous configuration? Answer is definitely yes. You are aware sodium configuration is 2, 8, 1. Let us check. First shell, only two electrons are there. Second shell, two plus two, uh, sorry, uh, that two two, that is second shell, two plus six, eight electrons are there. And last shell, only third shell is last one. So electronic configuration is according to previous, two, eight, one. Let us go for calcium. First shell, only one. So write down two. Second shell, two S and two P. So two plus six, eight. Third shell, 3s and 3p total 2 plus 6 8 and fourth shell 2 getting idea that's why the configuration is 2882 and not <coughs> and not 2855 or any probability of that so here it is clearly mentioned according to afbau principle so afbau principle is actually a fantastic way to give electronic configuration of an element. So this is performed by me. Now you have to perform. Uh, obviously take this down. Pause this video. Take this all chart. Because you have to produce this chart your own. Produce that. And then after writing these two examples. Uh, go for the most complicated here. Carry out electronic configuration of uranium yourself. Atomic number 92, mass number 238. Try to do it yourself. You are uh, what we can say uh, management skill, calculation skill, like that and patience. Everything is tested here. Try to carry out electronic configuration of uranium. Uh, one more spoon feeding. You are aware how many electrons are there now? 92. You have to fill. Uh, fill 92 electrons now start uh, electronic configuration of uranium now uh, you are aware that your skill that uh, management skill and all calculation skill they are playing important role here so I will write here in a somewhat smaller size because I have to accommodate totally 92 electrons as atomic number of uranium is 92 we have to accommodate 92 electrons so 1 is 2 C 1 is 2, 
then 2s, 2s2, then third track 2p6, 3s2, next track 3p6, then 4s2. So after 3p, again I am telling, 3d is not filled. After 3p it is 4s. Now fifth track 3d 10. I will keep here only 3d 10 and I will get total of all. So 10, 10, 20, 10, 30. So here I will write total 30. So you get 62 electrons to fill. So after 3d it is 4p. So I will write here from 4p 6. Then 5s2. Now 6 track 4d 10. 5p 6. 6s2. Okay. Uh, then we are going to 7 track where we will get 4f14. Then 5d 10. So I will make total here only that is 6 plus 2 8, 18, 24, 26, 30, 40, 50. So total is 80. So reminder 12. So 5D. Then I will go to 6P. 6P is 6. Reminder is 12. Out of that 6. 7 is 2. 8. So uh, reminder is here 12 out of that 8 is there that means reminder is 4 after 7 is we are going to next track that is 5f no doubt 5f I can write 14 but I don't have electron electrons are only 4 so I have to write here 4 electrons and then you can check the total 6 plus 2 8 plus 4 12 total is 2 5 plus 1 6 plus 3 9 92 is the total. So this way we carried out electron configuration of uranium with skill, certain skills, not high class, but these skills are important. This is the way we are carrying out electronic configuration of sodium, uh, sorry, uranium. But uh, after making this type of huge electronic configuration, we want to assign them. How? I have to assign like that according to number, first shell first, second, third, like that. Let me clarify. Here I will collect only 1s is there. So I will write 1s, 2s, 2p, alright, 3, it is 3s2, 3p6, I have one last time that after 3p it is 4s, then it is 3d. But here I have to arrange all three together and therefore after carrying out this configuration I am assured then only I am writing 3D 10. Now 4S2 check out 4S 4P 4D 4F. So I will write 4S2 4P6 4D 10 4F 14 after that 5S so 5s2, 5p6, 5d10 and last 5f4. Now 6 shell, it is 6s2, 6p6, 6d not under construction. So keep it as it is and 7s. You will come to know this is called as shell under construction whereas last shell is 7s2 or 7 remain unchanged uh, let me clarify uh, would you like to carry out one more electronic configuration next element of uranium is neptunium atomic number 93 that means what you have to fill up 93 electrons so right now you fill up with so many only one electron you have to add where you are going to add 5f Five. Next element of neptunium is plutonium. 5f6. That means this is called as shell under construction. Okay. 
सो लास्ट शेल लास्ट शेल रिमेन्स सेम सेकंड लास्ट शेल रिमेन्स सेम एंड इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर एडेड इन थर्ड लास्ट शेल दिस इज द पिक्युलरिटी ऑफ युरेनियम देयरफॉर इट इज कॉल्ड एज इनर ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट यू माइट हैव नोटिस दैट व्हेन यूजुअली वी डिस्क्राइब पीरियोडिक टेबल वी से दैट इफ लास्ट थ्री शेल्स आर इनकम्प्लीटली फेल्ड इन वी आर कॉलिंग डी टेम एज inner transition element question is always there in mind that if all earlier shells are filled first and then higher shells then why this is the situation why three shells are remaining uh, semi filled the thing is that uh, according to apau principle this is the way and therefore uranium is having last three shells incompletely filled shell under construction is third last whereas second last and last shell remain unchanged so i hope you might have carried out all these electronic configuration nicely after successfully carrying out electronic configuration of uranium 92 and uh, neptunium 93 plutonium 94 i will give you some more simpler tasks to do now carry out electronic configuration of phosphorus atomic number 15 Mass number thirty one. So try to do electronic configuration of phosphorus. Now you may say that it is quite easy after observing this all. Say it's we have to accumulate only fifteen electron. First pause this video. Try to make yourself. Then I will do. So fifteen electrons I have to accumulate. One is two. Two is two. Two p six. 3s2 remainder 10 plus 2 12 15 electron that means remainder 3 so electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p3 so this is the way electronic configuration of phosphorus now if you are going this way you will find it is easy so first we have carried out simpler task then tough task and then again simpler task but life is not so simple as we are thinking so here another rule is applicable and we are going to do that that is called as hund's rule of maximum multiplicity or that called as hund's rule of maximum multiplicity that says that uh, when d generated orbitals are available first let me clear you the concept degenerated orbitals degenerated orbitals means orbital having same energy level then they are called as degenerated orbitals now here if i am saying these two orbitals let us check this is 3s graphically i will show this now 3p graphically i will show Tp orbital is divided into three part, whereas this is called as energy gap. So 3s2. So this is first electron, second electron. Now here question is that why I have shown this way? Because electron is shown, uh, it is revolving around nucleus, but at the same time it is having spin motion. it is revolving uh, rotating around its axis also you are aware that planets they are revolving around sun in our solar system but at the same time they are revolving around their axis also same way electrons are also revolving around their axis in case of planet is it possible that all planets revolve in same direction answer is no you will get surprising data that venus and uranus these two planets revolve in reverse way means earth rotates uh, sorry uh, not revolve rotate earth rotates from west to east direction am i wrong i am revising earth rotates west to east direction that's why you will find that sun is rising at east and setting at west so earth rotates from west to east many planets rotates in same way but venus and uranus though they rotate in 
exactly opposite way means they will rotate from east to west all right so this is the case so electron also rotated clockwise as well as anti clockwise so here by indicating this type of arrow i am indicating electron rotating clockwise by indicating this arrow i am rotating electron indicating anti clockwise so this way we are showing spin of electron that is clockwise and anti clockwise now according to the principle of magnetism any charged body is in motion i am revising any charged body is in motion it is going to produce magnetic field around it so electron is a charged body it is rotating also that's why it is producing magnetic field around it the clockwise spin will produce different magnetic field anti clockwise will produce different magnetic field opposite magnetic fields are there therefore there is attraction and that's why in our orbital two electrons can be accommodated but always keep in mind one will spin clockwise then other must spin anti clockwise parallel spin is not a energetically stable condition so here i should not say both are clockwise or both are anti clockwise i to say show one is clockwise other is anti clockwise now uh, p orbital according to our uh, data i will explain in some other lecture but this is called as zeeman effect and stoic effect so in order to accommodate that they say that p orbital is subdivided into uh, according to say uh, x axis is there then we are calling it as 3p x orbital according to y orbital then we are calling it as 3p y orbital and according to z orbit uh, sorry z axis it is called as 3p z orbital so this way now i am changing this 3s to 3p3 in format of 3s box two electrons 3p x 3p y 3p z now as here is energy gap we are not saying these orbitals are degenerated but as here there is no energy gap so px py pz we are considering degenerated orbital that means they have same energy now first electron how many electrons i have to accommodate three first electron i will say this way second electron actually i should show this way but no why because there is space available so why to go here so second electron will remain independent third electron will also remain independent instead of pairing out they will try to remain unpaired as far as possible hans rud is saying the same thing when degenerated orbitals are available electron will try to remain unpaired as far as possible so how we are going to modify this configuration so this configuration i am rewriting 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 is unchanged here i will write this way but p i am now splitting this way that 3p x1 3p y1 3p z1 don't say 3p x1 y1 z1 because in mathematics we have habit of making common so in 3p x 3p y 3p z take 3p common x y z so don't do that because these are the names of orbital and we can't say that with names of uh, uh, orbital something we can take common so this is 3p x 3p y 3p z this way we can do electronic configuration of phosphorus now next element you will try first then i will try chlorine atomic number 17 so first try yourself i am just writing here chlorine atomic number 17 mass number suppose 35 we are going to discuss electronic configuration of chlorine so now your experience one 1h2 2h2 2p6 3s2 3p 5 so according to apau principle this is our electronic configuration this is according to apau principle now we have to apply this hans rule of maximum multiplicity 
so I have to check for 3p5. So in case of this, first electron, second, third, but now there is no place for fourth electron to go. And then pairing is possible, but in reverse way. Now not necessary electron should go in X only. It may go in Y, it may go in Z, anywhere. But we have to consider alphabetically for sake of convenience. So we are saying fourth electron is going this way, fifth electron will go this way. Okay, whereas there is no six electron, so no question. So I will modify this configuration as 3p x2, 3p y2, 3p z1. So this way we are modifying chlorine. Keep in mind Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity that is used when p, d or f these orbitals are last orbital and they are incompletely fit. Okay. For argon, no need to explain. Argon is having atomic number 18. So you can write down simply 3p6. Okay. Uh, but if you are talking of incompletely filled orbital, then this is required. So this is we are discussing about electronic configuration and we just studied out Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity. When we have to apply this Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity, for that purpose keep in mind PDF, either of that orbital should be last orbital and second implied condition that should not be fully filled. For S orbital such splitting is not there. For P orbital, uh, just as shown PX, PY, PZ, if orbital is D, then uh, d orbital is split up into d x square minus y square, d z square, d x y, d y z, d x z. So like that, five splits are there because you are aware d orbital is having 10 electrons. Each orbital should have only two electrons. So in order to that, d orbital is split up. Keep in mind d orbital is also degenerated orbital. But in excited state, it splits up. 2 will go upside, 3 will go downside. But that is not right now part of our study. So this part, uh, time to time, when we are particularly we discuss d block element, at that time we are going to discuss in detail. So here, this way, we can check out the split of d orbital quantum numbers keep in mind whatever we have discussed right now that only i'm going to discuss once again and little bit here and there only we are giving names now so first we are saying quantum numbers so uh, there are total four quantum numbers we have to study. The first quantum number we have to study that is called as principal quantum number. We have discussed this as we discussed that there are shells that uh, we are calling them as n equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. They are also termed something like n equal to 1 that is k then l m and so on so this is called as principal quantum number denoted by letter k l m n like that generally we denote it as a small n that is mentioned number it is all integers starting from 1 2 3 4 like that theoretically speaking infinite shells are there but practically we are aware that we discuss only seventh is the last shell for existing number of electrons. So uh, keep in mind last known element naturally occurring last known element is uranium atomic number 92. Then onwards 
all elements are synthetic element so you might have noticed that a new element is discovered having atomic number 100 then 105 107 111 like that so all these elements are synthetic element they are having uh, higher atomic numbers but not necessarily electron number is same and therefore we are not discussing much of that so we are discussing uh, in our knowledge we discuss uranium 92 where 5f was the last shape even it is not having 7f 6f is also not there in case of uranium and therefore we are not discussing much of that now we are aware of principal quantum number we say theoretically speaking infinite values are there but practically speaking seventh is the last shell now uh, this is called as principal quantum number second quantum number we are going to discuss that is denoted by letter small l this is called as azimuthal quantum number what word we are using here azimuthal quantum number so azimuthal quantum number is having value 0 2 and minus 1 I, I am writing this way many times it is mentioned that only n minus 1 no it is having value from 0 to n minus 1 let me clarify if shell number 5 is there let us consider shell number 5 for shell number 5 obviously n will be equal to 5 if n is equal to 5 then value of l will be 0 2 now 5 minus 1 that will be 4 and therefore values are 0 1 2 3 4 getting idea so this way value of l that is determined it is not only 4 it is 0 to 4 all integers we have to consider now let us go step by step straight away just i have shown what is l but now we are going to discuss somewhat detail so let us consider n equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 then l will have value from 0 to n minus 1 that is from 0 to 1 minus 1 that means from 0 to 0 that means only 0 now if i am writing electronic configuration in the manner that first shell that is principal quantum number followed by azimuthal quantum number we may read this as 1 0 no rather many people may read this as 10 and confusion is there to avoid that confusion this 0 is written as s and therefore a uh, value of s is actually speaking here 0 don't misconcept between capacity and value capacity is number of electron we can accommodate that is 2 whereas 0 is value of azimuthal quantum number now as a result you can check that 1s because n equal to 1 there is only s we have not written here 1p 1d 1f so first shell is only having value s now let us put n equal to 2 you will find the value of l will be 0 and 1 2 minus 1 1 so as value is 1 it is denoted by letter p that's why you will get here 2s and 2p there is no 2d 2p uh, sorry 2f only 2s and 2p let us consider n equal to 3 the value will be 0 1 2 by 2 n minus 1 so 3 minus 1 2 so 2 that means d and 3 that is f rest of the things may be there but we don't want to write because electrons are not there so n equal to 3 n equal to 4 then l value will be 0 1 2 3 getting idea so n equal to 2 only 2 orbitals are there n equal to 3 
we are getting three orbitals now d but f is absent n equal to 4 you will get all four orbitals 1 2 3 4 so for 4 s p d and f all these orbitals are available so this is called as azimuthal quantum number that's why i told that uh, whatever we have discussed that only we have to discuss again but repeating but we are adding out one one concept more so here we discuss principal quantum number azimuthal quantum number but while above principle discussing we didn't discuss that but now you are aware that how values are assigned when we are talking 3p say by writing i will write 3p but in your mind it should be clear 3 but p means what 1 so we have to keep in mind it is 3 and 1 but if i am writing 3 and 1 then one may read 31 and therefore this arrangement is there that second number is replaced by letter but that second number or that letter that is called as azimuthal quantum number now we have to discuss third quantum number that is called as magnetic quantum number now we are going little bit detail uh, according to Niels uh, sorry according to Sir J.J. J. Thompson's atomic model. Electrons were stationary. They were embedded in the atom. That is also water melon shape, something uh, water melon model. But when we are talking of ruler force model, electron is not stationary. Electron is in motion. In motion, it is performing circular orbit around it. According to Niels Bohr's model, Electron uh, nucleus is at center suppose electrons they are forming a cloud over nucleus it is uh, for example distributing equally around nucleus now here if you check out the radius or rather I should say diameter of atom it is of the uh, range in terms of angstrom you are aware that one angstrom that means 10 raised to minus 10 meter that means simply I have to say 1 upon 10 to the power of 10 meter now see the calculation whereas what is speed of electron almost equal to speed of light not exactly equal to speed of light but it is almost equal to speed of light and you are aware speed of light is 3 lakh kilometer per second so in a second electron should travel not 3 lakh let us imagine 2 lakh kilometer not that slow but yes let us imagine so 2 lakh kilometer distance electron will cover within one second but the available space is 10 to the minus 10 uh, 10 to the power of minus 10 meter less than that so 1 upon 10 to the power of minus 10 meter so tiny space is available so imagine the way electron will revolve around nucleus and then can we locate out an electron? Answer is no. It is very very difficult for us to locate out an electron. Uh, keep in mind, nobody ever seen all this. I am not able to see single atom. In childhood, I was having concept something like that with microscope. We can uh, check out uh, cell. We can observe cell. In the cell also nucleus is there, vacuoles and all these things are there. So like that there will be some microscope. With that help of microscope we can see the atoms. But yet no such atom, uh, no such microscope is developed yet. That's why we have to go on imaginary basis. Suppose you have this type of microscope. I am saying again, it is not developed yet. Student may have misconceived that electron microscope can able to locate out electron answer is no. But suppose imagine you have such a microscope where you can see single atom like huge uh, football like that if you are able to observe single atom then can we locate electron there answer is no because electron will complete 2 lakh kilometer distance in one second it's greater than diameter of earth it is greater than circumference of earth too high too long distance that will cover within a second and so there is a principle that is called as 
Hazelberg's uncertainty principle. I am revising name of principle that is called as Hazelberg's uncertainty principle. According to this principle, it is difficult to locate out an electron. Either we can locate out exact position of electron or we can locate out, uh, we can find out exact momentum of electron. But right now forget of momentum. So with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, I can say certainly that it is difficult to locate out an electron in atom. Then what I can locate out? I can locate out the area. I can locate out the region where electron finding probability is maximum. I am not saying where electron will be there. I can get that electron. What word we are using here? Electron finding probability is maximum. That region is called as orbital. Getting idea? Now these orbitals are having different shapes. For example, S orbital. Keep in mind, S sphere. So S orbital is spherical in shape. Electron density is distributed all around nucleus equally. So this is something shape of S orbital. The P orbital is having dumbbell shape. Now in our book it is written as dumbbell shape. I am saying dumbbell shape. But I should say rather instead of dumbbell, that shape resembles to infinite sign to closer extent. Say this is the shape. So what I should say, infinite. But in book it is written dumbbell shape. So I am saying it is dumbbell shape. So this is, or if it is vertically this way, then we can say shape of 8. That is also right option. But they say it is shape of dumbbell. So we are saying dumbbell shape. Now second part. Uh, when we observe spectra, you are checking out, uh, we discuss about spectra. Spectra means what? That particular radiation is emitted by substance or particular radiation is absorbed by substance. If substance is absorbing radiation, then we are calling it as absorption spectra. If substance is emitting out the uh, thing, then we are calling it as emission spectra. So right now we are concerned about emission spectra. So particular wavelength only emitted. But if you place that sample in strong magnetic field, then spectral lines are split up into two parts. If you are placing that substance in strong magnetic field, then you may observe spectral lines are split up. This effect is called as Zeeman effect. Now instead of magnetic field, suppose we use strong electric field, direct current. So if you are using strong electric field, then same effect is observed. This is called a Stark effect. Why this is so? To account this, they carried out uh, research and they say that P orbital is having dumbbell shape. Electron density, uh, now you are aware of this word electron density. Uh, that means uh, where electron find, it is not density of electron. Electron finding probability is maximum in particular area. Then we say electron density is more. So, uh, let's say this is the coordinate system. This is called as x-axis. This is called as y-axis. This is called as z-axis. Actually, on this board, this is x and this is y. Whereas z-axis is protruding out like this, perpendicular. But I can't show 3D. And therefore I am showing only 2D. That's why I am tilting out. Say, don't say this is an acute angle. This is also a 90 degree. That is perpendicular. This is also 90 degree. Okay. Just imagine this is 3 dimensional. So, uh, if electron density is distributed along with X axis. In case of P then this is called as Px orbital. If electron density is distributed equally in case of y orbital, uh, y axis, then it is called as Ty. 
and if electron density is distributed equally in this direction dumbbell shape towards z axis then it is called as p z orbital so this is px py pz this is in order to account zeeman effect stirk effect all that so this way shape of orbitals are there uh, now we have to account this that is called as magnetic quantum number so we are now focusing on magnetic quantum number magnetic quantum number is denoted by letter m and value values are something like that for every value of azimuthal quantum number because we are aware azimuthal quantum number is connected with principal quantum number so every value of azimuthal quantum number it is having minus l to 0 and 0 to plus l let me clarify if n equal to 1 we are aware if n equal to 1 then l equal to 0 and therefore magnetic quantum number will be minus 0 to 0 to plus 0 but keep in mind yet no mathematicians with my knowledge but no mathematicians are able to detect this type of figure minus 0 and plus 0 in maths there is only 0 0 can't be minus and can't be plus so magnetic quantum number value is 0 that's why uh, electron density is distributed everywhere equally that is s orbital but when we are talking of p orbital uh, let us check l equal to 2 uh, sorry n equal to 2 If n equal to two, then value of l is zero and one. So if l is one, that means orbital is p. For p orbital, I may say minus one to zero and zero to plus one. That means p orbital is splitting out into three. One is p x, other is p y, and third is p z. try to recollect we discuss this everything under name hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity so this is called as hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity for that purpose we discuss the split of p orbital into px py pz but energically there are their energy same whether electron density is arranged according to x axis y axis or z axis and therefore you know, there are these orbitals are called as d generated orbitals that is they are having same energy now this is magnetic quantum number if p if d is there then you are aware d value is 2 so we have to give value as minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 2 so d orbital is divided into Five, two, three, four, and five. Just uh, we discussed in earlier part that is d x square minus y square, d z square, d x y, d y z, d x z. So like that. So this is called as magnetic quantum number. After that, last part we are going to discuss that is called as spin quantum number. This also we discuss. Electron is having spin motion. One is clockwise, other is anti-clockwise. So, if electron spins clockwise, we have to denote it by plus half. Whereas electron is spinning anti-clockwise, it is denoted as minus half. So, this way, spin quantum number is there for every orbital plus half and minus half. now why spin quantum number we are denoting here in terms of plus half and minus half uh, i'm not going in detail but only want to explain there are categories of particles no no electron proton neutron all these things but uh, there are many particles and then they are categorized as fermion and boson if fermion is there the particles are denoted by value half 3 by 2 like that values are there for fermion so electron belonging to this category fermion 
therefore electron is denoted as plus half and minus half so plus half means clockwise spin minus half means anti clockwise spin so like that spin number that is there so total four quantum numbers are there as i discussed first quantum number is principal second is azimuthal third is magnetic and fourth spin uh, i hope you are very much clear about these all quantum numbers but yet i want to give you example so take it a uh, simple exercise you have to perform give all four quantum numbers of last electron of chlorine i am revising give all four quantum numbers of last electron of chlorine now you are aware that chlorine first we have to go by electronic configuration of chlorine so chlorine is having atomic number 17 so i have to assign 17 electron so just take down uh, you have already carried out electronic configuration of chlorine you can check it down 1s2 2s2 2p6 as it is 3p5 i have to assign that 3p x 3p y 3p z so first electron that's why we are showing here half otherwise i have to show by full arrow but this is to indicate half means what it is category of fermion 3p y 3p z 3 i have to accommodate five electrons so this is fourth electron this is fifth electron one clockwise one anti clockwise so what is remaining electron that is 3p z is the last so i have to assign quantum number of 3p z so uh, first i have determine which is the last electron that is there in 3p z and now we are writing out c 3p so first i have to write down principal quantum number so as i am talking of only this electron principal quantum number is 3 azimuthal quantum number it may be 0 1 2 but i am talking of only this as a result azimuthal quantum number of p p means what 1 so here l equal to 1 now magnetic quantum number you are aware minus 1 0 Plus one. So with this terminology, it can be plus one. And lastly, spin quantum number that I don't know because the electron is unpaired. So it can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. So like that, we can find out from this data all four quantum numbers of last electron of chlorine. Same way, we can go here and find out. Uh, now you carry out exercise in the same fashion. Uh, last electron of phosphorus, atomic number fifteen. So electronic configuration is there in front of you. You can check out uh, with that. You'll get the data this way. So three p x, three p y, three p z. But again, same thing. I have to focus on three p z. So as it is three p z. Same data is repeated. N equal to three. L equal to one. But uh, uh, sorry, ha. Huh. N equal to plus one, and S that will be either plus half or minus half. So that is there for phosphorus. One more exercise. Uh, find out all four quantum numbers of last electron of potassium, atomic number nineteen. first you do pause this video then also potassium atomic number 19 electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s1 so last electron is there in 4s1 now i have to go by 4s1 configuration so as i am writing here 4s1 it is very clear that n equal to 4 l No doubt, zero, one, two, three. But yet, 
it is s and you are aware s means what zero so l is zero so there is no plus zero and minus zero so magnetic quantum number is also zero whereas spin quantum number either plus half or minus half <coughs> So this way we can find out quantum numbers, all four quantum numbers of atom, uh, of all electrons. Now, one more named data that is called as Pauli's exclusive principle. He is the intelligent one. By observing all these things, he says, in a single atom, no two electrons are having all set of quantum numbers same to same. I am revising. In a single atom, there are we can't find two electrons having same set of all quantum numbers. Is it true? Answer is extremely. So you can take any orbital. Say for example, let us check example. I will give you example. Uh, let us go for magnesium. Magnesium is atomic number 12. So, atomic number 12 means electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Let us consider 3s2 set. So, electron 1 and electron 2. N, obviously you can check 3s, therefore N is 3. Here also N is 3. L, SA. So, 0, 0, n, as n is 0, m is also 0. So, here, all three sets are same. But fourth set, spin quantum number, if this is plus half, then this is minus half. And if this is minus half, then this is plus half. Because in orbit, we have to show electron like this. One is clockwise, one is anticlockwise. As a result, all four sets are not getting same. Lastly, spin quantum number differs. This is Pauli's exclusive principle. Alright. So we discuss, name-wise we discuss, uh, say for example, Aufbau principle. Aufbau means to fill up. Then we discuss Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity. Then we discuss uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Then we discuss Zeeman effect, Sturck effect, then all quantum numbers we discuss. Now we discuss about Pauli's exclusive principle. This way we discuss almost all part of atomic structure. I am again saying that it is not 100% knowledge. Okay, But comparatively good set of knowledge is provided to you. Time to time when we proceed further, this lecture you have to consider as fundamental lecture. As we proceed further, time to time, we are getting different data. Okay, so electronic configuration right now I have explained that is according to Aufbau principle. But when we will discuss electronic configuration about lanthanide element, then only Aufbau principle is not working there. We have to use some different principles also. So, with fundamental knowledge, this chapter is almost all finished. Yet, few things are there. Uh, after all this discussion, uh, in latter phase, scientists discovered, for example, D. Broglie. D. Broglie says, electron is not a particle. Electron is wave also. Then we have concept of dual nature of matter. At a time matter can be experienced in form of wave and at a time it can be experienced in form of matter. So like that dual uh, nature of matter. If you are applying that, then how we can say that electron is having positive charge or negative charge or something like that. Just we discussed there is antiparticle of electron that is called as positron having positively charged. So like that various concepts are there and that's why changes occur. Then there is equation that is Schrodinger's equation but I am not discussing that. I have ended the chapter till Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that it is difficult to locate out an electron in atom 
so we can find out a region where electron finding probability is more so this is all about our discussion thanks for observing